build an epic mountain range in Gaia using just a few simple nodes. Let's go. The simulate nodes are designed to simulate natural phenomena such as erosion, sedimentation, water flow, wind, and gravity. These nodes transform terrain from an artificial look into something natural and believable. The first node is anatomies. The anatomies node simulates predefined terrain types based on real-world landform archetypes. It acts like a terrain generator with built-in natural logic, letting you build highly realistic base terrains with minimal setup. As you can see, it can add more depth to the existing details and enhance them with different modes. The Crumble Node The Crumble Node simulates natural collapse and breakage in terrain, like cliffs eroding and falling apart, rock slides, or broken canyon walls. It introduces a sense of decay, age, and drama to the terrain surface by Frechkung it in realistic ways. As you can see, it can create erosion or landslides along with depressions on our mountain, just like in the image you see. At the same time, you can also simulate the area where the mountain connects with the ground. The Easy Erosion The Easy Erosion node provides a quick and user-friendly way to apply erosion effects to your terrain. It's designed for artists who want fast results without needing to tweak complex erosion parameters. As you can see, with just one node you can apply such strong details, like rocky or exposed surfaces, to the entire terrain, offering a wide variety for different scenes. The Erosion Node the Erosion Node is one of Gaia's most powerful and essential simulation tools. It mimics the real-world processes of water flow, sediment displacement, and thermal erosion to create stunningly realistic terrain details. As you can see, in the Erosion section you adjust the hardness percentage along with the depth of the rocks and erosion. By using the downcutting option, you create a cut with eroded details at the lower surface. Then, by adding the flow features, you can achieve results that resemble this image. Erosion Node 2 The Erosion Node and Erosion Node 2 in Gaia are generally similar in functionality. Both are used to simulate natural erosion, but they differ in accuracy, performance, and controllability. The second generation is hover than the previous one because it uses more advanced algorithms but it provides greater accuracy. As you can see, it includes more precise algorithms, so it's better to use this one for final work. The Hullifer Node The Hullifer Node enhances or creates ridge-like, elevated landforms across your terrain. It's used to accentuate or simulate hill formations, getting the elevation structure before or after erosion for more balanced, readable terrain. Overall, it softens sharp details and makes the terrain smoother. Luchton Bug Node This node is responsible for generating branching patterns and both connected and scattered flows, similar to the effect of power lines or small rivers. As you can see, it creates scattered lines that, by increasing the depth and spacing between the rocks, can even be used to create fantasy-like scenes such as this one. The Sediments Node The Sediments Node simulates the deposition of materials, like sand, mud, or debris, that are carried and deposited by natural erosion processes. It adds layers of realism by mimicking how terrain naturally builds up over time in lower areas. You can create mountains sunk in sand, buried in snow, or even a scene with piles of debris. The Thermal Node The Thermal Node simulates thermal erosion, also known as creep. This process models how material from steep slopes collapses and slides downward due to gravity over time, leading to softer, rounded shapes. As you can see here, we can simulate the flow of materials such as water, lava, or mud within the surface depressions.
Thermal 2 node. Compared to the first node, it's lighter and can even affect surfaces. Using the Remove Sediment option, you can control its percentage or even remove it entirely. The Wizard Node. The Wizard Node is a multifunction simulation assistant that helps you quickly generate complex terrains using pre-configured erosion and shaping logic. It's perfect for rapid prototyping, concept terrain design, or when you want a quick starting point without manually chaining multiple nodes. As you can see, you can control the intensity, spacing, material and its strength, the distance between the grooves, and even the shape of the peaks. The Wizard 2. The Wizard and Wizard 2 nodes in Gaia seem to have similar functionality. Both are used for quickly generating terrain with combined algorithms, but there are some differences between the two. Wizard 2 comes improved with higher quality and variety, more natural results suitable for final projects, advanced and more flexible settings, slightly hover but optimized for quality. Perfect for starting a professional project with production-ready output. The Debris Node. The Debris Node simulates the accumulation of small rocks, gravel, and fragments at the base of slopes and cliffs, replicating how natural debris collects over time through erosion and rockfall. The Scree Node. This node is also similar to the previous one. The scree node simulates loose rock fragments and slope debris that typically form scree fields, those layered, gravel-like piles you often see at the base of cliffs or steep mountains. The dusting node. The dusting node simulates fine dust or sediment accumulation on flat, or semi-flat areas of terrain. It adds a soft layer of micro-deposition, similar to how real dust settles over time in crevices and low-slope areas making it feel highly realistic and controllable. As you can see, it actually gives us a mask, and we can easily use this mask in Gaia or export it and use it in Unreal. The Snow Node. The Snow Node simulates snow accumulation on terrain, adding a layer of soft, elevated buildup that mimics natural snowfall. It's based on angle, elevation, and direction, making it feel highly realistic and controllable. As you can see, with its options it can generate smooth, uniform snow, snow with scattered depressions, 
or even melted snow. The Snowfield Node The Snowfield Node simulates broad snow-covered terrain as a primary landform, rather than just layering snow on existing terrain. It is used to generate entire snowy landscapes, not just snow accumulation on surfaces. The Shrubs Node The Shrubs Node generates a distribution mask for low vegetation like bushes, shrubs, and undergrowth. It simulates how such vegetation tends to grow in specific elevation, slope, and erosion-protected areas. As you can see, you can increase or decrease the mask's intensity, subtract it from the height or from the surface, and many other options. The Trees Node generates a mask for tree distribution, simulating natural growth conditions for various forest types. It's highly customizable and helps define where trees would grow realistically based on terrain features. This node also works similarly to the previous one, and you can fully control it in every way. The Lake Node The Lake Node simulates the natural accumulation of water in low-lying areas of the terrain, essentially identifying and filling basins and valleys where water would logically collect. It's used to create realistic lake beds and water body masks for further use in rendering or game engines. The River Node The River Node procedurally generates natural river paths across your terrain, simulating how rivers cut through landscapes over time. It intelligently follows elevation flow and erosion patterns, creating realistic riverbeds, banks, and deltas. The sea node adds a global sea level to your terrain, simulating the presence of oceans or large bodies of water. It works by flooding low-lying areas based on a defined elevation threshold and gives you a clean mask for sea regions. As you can see, by adding erosion to a hillside, we can create a good base for applying this node. And by adding debris, we can bring even more detail to the scene.
Now let's take this simple mountain example that I made, and you can practice it as well. First, I created a mountain and made a copy of it since I wanted the second one to be placed a bit farther back. Then, I moved them around. I added a just to them to increase their intensity, and then, to give them a more spherical shape relative to the ground, I used the Shaper node. I also added a Mountain Range node to create surface irregularities, and an Erosion node to give our mountains better detail. I combined all the nodes together. For the side mountains, I also created two more mountains, moved them around, and finally combined them with the other nodes. Finally, by adding a Snowfall node, I achieved this result. You can even simulate the mountains in the background in the same way. So don't wait, start practicing, and test out the nodes you've learned.